everyone. How y'all doing tonight? Good. 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 All right, all right. I'm going to be feeling good tonight. All right. So the first poem I'm going to share with you, um, I think I've actually shared this before um, at one of the previous voices, uh, and the second poem I'm going to share um, is a bit newer, um, and I don't think I've performed at voices before, so I think some of you may have heard this one if you were here. So here it goes. The title is called History Class. Every high school student these days is supposed to take a set of required classes. In most states, one of these mandated classes is a subversion of U.S. history, or as I like to call it, the history of how white people profit off of and oppress black people. At some point during the school year, your teacher for this class will describe the gruesome living and working conditions of black people in the 18th and 19th centuries. She'll show you a classic picture of the glassy scars that bruise and emboss red-hot pain on the backs of ancestors whose gratitude for I have not yet forgotten. And when your teacher gets to what the textbook will describe as a tragic incident, all the white kids in your class will make disgruntled faces and sighs, trying to remove the cognitive dissonance between their sins and their ancestors' sins, convincing themselves that they are absolved of benefiting from a country that was built off my ancestors' blood, sweat, and tears. <coughs> then your teacher will plow through the rest of a poorly designed, inconsistent with the facts curriculum. Your teacher will surely spend a day on Martin Luther King Jr., but only to watch and read a transcript of his I Have a Dream speech. Your teacher won't really tell you how revolutionary he became. That would scare her and the class of you and the white kids as they smile silently, digesting the image of well-spoken pacifist Negro. This is how the white kids in your class will expect black people to act from now on. Your teacher will mention Malcolm X in name only and skip over black nationalism completely, you wouldn't dare find her lecturing on the Black Panthers or leading discussions on Marcus Garvey. Then one day, near the end of class, she'll assign you an end-of-the-year project with the prompt reading, What are you most thankful for of this country? <laughs> I have to admit, I chuckled a bit after reading that prompt. But then, quickly after, I gulped the air around me and the feeling turned to sick in my stomach as I asked myself the question, what you mean am I most thankful for in this country? See, I failed to take seriously the juxtaposition of the word thankful against the phrase this country because in my mind this country is too synonymous with oppression and slavery and Jim Crow. This country being the non-acknowledgement of slave burial grounds up north whose bones from overworked bodies write the untold history of this country. See, this is not a history class and this isn't a history textbook. Your pats on the back from my people's progress failed to tell the truth true story, lest these white kids in my class walk out of school into society thinking they understand how well uh, they've got it, not understanding how bad we've got it. I won't let them forget how black bodies paid the price for America's greatness. Don't you forget that your beloved star-spangled banner waved high and mighty over a slave plantation on some hot sunny day when master ordered the niggers to pick his cotton as my ancestors stood their ground so that I might one day be able to be here and share this poem with you. It's only they really knew that there really is no difference between 1916 and 2016. Last time I checked, black bodies still experience shortness of breath from nooses and chokeholds. I think I'll sit out on this one and take an F, because this prompt don't make no kind of sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cool. So uh, the next poem, preface, uh, it's titled Letter for Abigail. Uh, it's uh, inspired... Um, well, inspired by a few things. The style of the poem is, is written in such a way that um, I'm a really big fan of Sonia Sanchez. Um, I'm not sure if you've read any of her work, but I love Sonia Sanchez. Um, and this is very, very much inspired by her. And the second thing is the topic of this poem is actually about um, a, a, someone you probably are all, all familiar with. Her name is uh, Abigail Fisher. Have you heard of her? Okay, so just the background. Abigail Fisher is, you know, this uh, mediocre... <laughs> A, a mm -hmm. white person who applied to, I think it was U UT Texas, right? And she didn't get in. Statistics prove that she did not get in because her grades and her scores were not good enough. And she still wouldn't have gotten in, even though she was black. And she somehow was able to take her case to the Supreme Court twice. And now they're currently, I think, deciding on the decision of that case. So the title of this poem is called Letta for Abigail. And I made this poem uh, because I think when, 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 when the news broke that, uh, you know, she was going back to the Supreme Court for a second time, I saw this being shared on Facebook a lot, and personally, I think for black students, um, I really wanted this poem to be kind of a reaffirmation poem for black students, so here we go. Child, please, get you a box of Kleenex tissues and wipe them tears, them fake-ass good-for-nothing white privilege tears before you spill them on my diploma. 
I reckon you don't have it so easy, maybe too easy, that when you tripped and fell, you moved back in line just a few measly steps. Meanwhile, my sisters and brothers waited patiently in the back for the chance for more chances. Honey, you ain't learned fairness like I have, and this world don't make no kind of sense. Like how the sun rise and set as often as black people be shot and killed by the police. Or why, oh, actually, or why can't nobody seem to escape the cycle of poverty if they bone poor and black? Or why are you asking questions like, why didn't black kids sit on my spot in school? And black kids on Chicago South Side asking questions like, am I gonna make it home alive from school? Abby girl, tell me how it is that when you bid a use is extra powerful, like the strength of a thousand suns with the vengeance of fire spitting dragons, seems like all it takes is for you to open your mouth and burn through bridges that I crossed to get here. Child, please, sit down. Sip some tea and take in the fresh air before you forget how good you've got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes! Yes.